Could you describe Supercomputer um, and maybe how it fits in with your interests and your practice? It's a computer that works through the flow of ball bearings through um, simple mechanical gates and does precisely what a computer does but on this very crazy you, you know sort of physical scale. Supercomputer has a power source. It's well, paradoxically, I mean, supercomputer is meant to be completely without any external power source, but um, because neither I nor anyone else has cracked perpetual motion yet, we do have to have some electricity in it to raise the balls back to the top again. When they're at the top, they can fall through the whole system, that's fine, but eventually they're all at the bottom and you have to get them back up. So. It's a combination of gravity and, unfortunately, the compromise of a bit of electricity. So it will run for 179 years? Um, well, I'm not claiming it will run for any length of time, but what I said initially was that if you adjust the settings on it, there's, you know, each day you make a different setting, um, it can compute a different outcome every day for 179 years. So yes, yeah, so its output is uh, a musical composition. It computes very minimal musical scores. So it has potentially that many um, scores, but a lot of them actually would be, you know, so minimal, they'd probably be one note repeating itself all day. But amongst that, there's, you know, it's, it's a very interesting thing, you know, it's a system. And among the, in that system, there's going to be some absolutely extraordinary complex compositions. Can you talk a little bit about the um, residency that you did at Aid and Abed and how that fed into the work? Of yeah. Now that was great actually because I felt initially kind of it wasn't my idea to do a residency. I was kind of felt obliged to do it. But it's, it's you know it's lovely to be given the space and a great bunch of people. And, um, and what was exciting ultimately was that very quickly what I set out to do, which was pretty much nothing except document what I was doing, became a whole different work in itself. Um, the first thing I did was just map out with thread the dimensions of the container into which the supercomputer would exist. And at some point I conceived of the notion of making a diagram, like a drawing in thread, three dimensional, uh, of the interconnections in supercomputer. And so then it became something <coughs> completely different. It became a, its own work, which is this three dimensional drawing, 24 by 8 foot by 8 foot. One of my interests in, you know, the idea of working in Cambridge and having to sort of think specifically about uh, something that was relevant to Cambridge is its, you know, its position in the um, evolution of computing. I've always been interested and in, read about Alan Turing um, and also mm -hmm. John Conway who uh, in the 60s invented something called the game of life which I won't try and explain but <clears throat> it's a very you know, it's a very simple um, evolutionary system, artificial life as opposed to artificial intelligence. So, you know, whereas artificial intelligence is, uh, is like take is a sort of very top-down process. You you try and understand, for example, how Beethoven would compose his music and then create systems that can emulate that process. Artificial life is like saying, okay, how how did a few cells get together and create this complex thing that human beings are. If you could talk a little bit about the technology you use in your work and why you describe it as post-digital. So this whole idea of post-digital is like, 
is to go sort of back again to the physical, um, a return to, you know, a tactile relationship with materials um, and the world from one in which everything's mediated through a screen, um, but still using strategies uh, and ideas developed through working with computers. What happens with supercomputer? Well, soup, yeah. Well, I mean, that's a good question, and and right now, um, it you know, there's a commitment from the people who will be looking after the CB1 site to look after it, but not indefinitely. Uh, I'm not sure quite what the grounds of the agreement are, but as far as I can understand, there's a commitment for a few years, and then it, it'll be, you know, take it from there. And my suggestion would be that to find um, people that do want to look after it and, and to give it to them, whether it's you know a university, a museum, an individual, whatever. You know, I wanted someone to go into it every day and change the settings, but I mean, that's not going to be possible. It, it's going to be looked after in a, in a less um, hands-on way. So we'll just have to see what happens. So, this is potentially a work that could run for a very long period of time yeah. and long player is going to run for a thousand years. Yes. Um, so these works would theoretically outlive us. Yes. Uh, would you say that you're an optimist? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, well, I'm an optimist but I'm also a pessimist, but through pessimism arises um, the, the hope that there is grounds for optimism.